Okay, this is the 12-tone technique. And as you can see over here, I have my row. My first row here is the 12 tones that I chose. Okay? And uh, I try to avoid such things as major thirds, minor thirds, um, octaves, perfect fifths, and stuff like that. That's the, uh, the rules. And um, they can be broken, and they're very flexible, as we're going to talk about. Uh, but uh, what we want to do today is to explain how to get our matrix or our Babbitt square filled out. Okay, this I here means the inversion. Okay, of these rows here, so each of these rows can be inverted. And uh, this is R for retrograde, and this is retrograde inversion. So all of these can be used in a composition and layered on top of each other. So um, as you can see here, I've got my prime written out here, and then I've got the retrograde inversion and the inversion. I just put seven there, so you go to number seven, and that would be that row. And I'd put R8, retrograde eight, so that would be that row there going that way. So playing the melody that way. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started on how to fill this out, okay? So let me show you this one here, okay? Now, this one is a little bit unconventional. Uh, this other one that I just showed you is going to be the basis for a new composition that I'm going to be doing, this one here. But just for the heck of it, I put in some major thirds and uh, kind of broke the rules. And you can do that. I think this is where um, this style of writing is going to kind of uh, take a step back and uh, instead of being so harshly dissonant, you can throw in the major thirds and, uh, and the minor thirds. Uh, even in this example, if you listen to it on YouTube uh, by Alban Berg, who was a Schoenberg disciple, um, he wrote in the Violin Concerto 1935, a tone row filled with tonal implications, major and minor thirds. So he had G, B flat, D, F sharp, A, C, E, G sharp, B, and ended with a, a tritone, uh, B, D flat, E flat, F. And so the piece, though, is strictly atonal. So that's something we can learn from. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and attempt to fill this row up. All right, first let's take a look at this other paper here. All right, we have a row, and when you fill out your row, it's going to look like this, just one row you've chosen. Okay, so what we want to do is figure out how to get the inversion, okay? To get our inversion to fill out this row, we're going to take each of these numbers and ask ourselves, what other number would it take added to these to make 12? And that's going to fill out this row. So in other words, 9 plus what equals 12, 3. Okay, so the G is our third note. Okay, all right. 1 plus what equals 12? 11, so that'd be the D sharp. 3 plus what equals 12? 9, C sharp. Okay, so on and so forth. There's our C sharp. And remember that these numbers here are simply the, that's our starting note, that's the first half step. E to F, then F sharp would be 2, see the pattern, G, and so on and so forth. All right, so that is how you get that row there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our 
worksheet here that I'm working on, the one with filled with thirds. What plus what, four plus what equals 12? Okay, that would be eight. So the G sharp goes in here and hopefully I can write it nicely. Okay, seven plus, and let me put uh, the eight here. Of course, that's gonna be our starting point. Okay, uh, seven plus five. So F equals 12. Okay, um, eight plus what equals 12? That would be four, so E would go here. Okay, so you see the pattern. So you're going to just continue that way. And uh, I'll fill it out real quick and uh, then come back. Right, let's do one more though. Okay, uh, 6 plus what equals 12? 6. So the F sharp would go in here. Okay, so you see it's pretty easy. All right, so I'm going to put 6 there. Well, I might as well continue on. Three plus nine is 12. So the nine, the A goes there. Okay. Uh, where am I at? Nine plus what equals 12? That'd be three. So the D sharp goes here. And we're here, two plus 10. So A sharp. And that's 10, of course. All right, and five plus five, or five plus seven, there we go, G is 12, let's see, okay. All right, and uh, 10 plus two, so the two is D. D goes in this square. One plus eleven B. And the last one, eleven plus one, so C sharp. There is our inversion of that row, okay? That's our inversion. So I'm now going to show you how to fill out the second column. Okay, this is the way you do it. Once again, we need that magic number 12. So four plus eight is 12, so C is gonna go here. And you're gonna use one number now and just completely go down. Now, four plus five is nine, so you're gonna throw nine in there, and that's that. Okay, uh, four plus four is eight, so you got G sharp. 4 plus 6, 10, A sharp. Okay, 4 plus 9 is 13, so we're one over. So what do we do? We subtract the 12 from the 13, so it's gonna be one, our answer, okay? So you're gonna to have to subtract if the number is larger. All right, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 is G. 4 plus 10, is 14, so we got two is going to be the difference. Four plus seven is 11, so we're okay there. We put a B in there. Four plus two is six, we put an F sharp. Four plus 11 is 15, so three is going to be our Note there, D sharp. Okay, and uh, let's see. Let me put one there. Four plus one, five. F goes here. Okay, now see, you just continue. Seven plus eight, okay, that's 15. So the difference, subtract 12, three. D sharp is gonna go there. I think you got the point. All right, so that's how you're gonna fill that out. 
Okay, this was the other matrix that I had filled out, the Babbitt, Babbitt square. Um, I'm going to play these notes here for you so you can hear them. All right, here we go. Okay, hear that? So there's a lot of possibilities. So to build chords now, I'll get more into this in another uh, series and video, but I just want to introduce this uh, uh, square here, the Babbitt square, and how to fill out the matrix. So that's really the purpose of this video, but I also want you to hear these pitches here. So, I, I mean, I got to play it again. I, th I thought it sounded pretty cool. So if I'm building chords, I'll want to take like the first three notes. You can't put this one and then that one. you got to take three or four or five or two all right in a row. Once you've used those four, then go to the next four, and then to the next four. Okay, so that may sound... The first one will sound like that together. E, C sharp, F, G, and C. repeat it you know as many times as you want okay um, now that I played that one let me go to this one I'm working on with the thirds and you can hear that one here we go sounds like it can be really interesting doesn't it all right so that was that row right across there okay now if I play it in retrograde backwards it sounds like this back to this one here so I kind of wanted to get out of this uh, major thirds here um, the CEG so uh, the sky's the limit with this so once I get this whole square filled out then I can work with all of these rows uh, inversions uh, transpositions um, retrogrades retrograde inversion and uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, there's a lot of color here you can paint with. Okay, this is another uh, matrix that I filled out a long time ago, a very long time ago. I think it was 1988. And um, here we have the main row, the 12 tones that I chose. And then we have the inversion. Uh, I think you got it now. I think uh, it's not that hard. What I want to do in a uh, DVD and other videos is explain all of the different things that you can do to build chords and, uh, and harmonies and different techniques that will open up. I can explain a few now just to get your feet wet. Um, so if you have a composition and let's say you're just a guitar player that uh, you have one instrument, okay, just your guitar. All right, and you've chosen this as your row. And um, you can build the chords by adding two note clusters or three or four. And rhythmically, you can be kind of out there and disjunct and, you know, not, not uh, like a march or anything like that. Um, and you can do that. And you can also layer, you can, uh, if you want, you can start with this row here and, and build, you know, uh, a chord or two, or, or just play the single line, you know. You have all of these possibilities, okay. Now let's say you have four, three or four or five instruments, okay. So you can start weaving these in and out. Um, of course, you can, you know, do the retrograde and you can do the prime 
your original row dubbed over top, you know, or, or even if you're just a guitar player and you want to make overdubs, yeah, you could do, you could do all of these. <laughs> you could do all these rows. If you got 48 tracks, you know, you could do them all. Um, so that would be, you know, 12 prime going this way, 12 inversions, okay, 12 retrogrades and 12 retrograde inversions. So imagine the possibilities. Uh, you know, of course, that would sound so thick, and it would be interesting to, to hear that and, and how thick it would sound. For example, I highlighted with colored pencil the row here. This is the original row, the prime, okay? So this is a piece by Anton Webern, Opus 21. Listen to it on... YouTube. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube, actually, of atonal stuff now. Um, check out Schoenberg, of course, Webern, Albenberg, Babbitt, to name a few. And uh, let me get back to this here. Okay, the green line is the inversion of O, okay, of our original row, okay. So that would be the vertical column, wherever it went. You know what I mean. That would be this, okay, the I-O, okay? So that would be this one here, I-O, down, okay? And then this was the first one, the original one. So both of those are going on at the same time, okay? And then look what comes in here. Yeah, it says a harp here. So playing in version eight, so let's say, let's say this was the, the notes. These are not the notes, but uh, we would take eight. So this one here is, is starting in the harp, okay? And of course, it picks up. It starts in the harp there, but picks up with the cello, okay? So the cello is playing down here. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, so you can, weave in and out of different uh, instruments being used. Uh, look at down here. Look at that. So each of the colored lines is, is a row, okay? Whether it's an inversion or a retrograde, uh, the sky's the limit. So that's just an example of showing you how this works. I think this is a, a great example. Well, I thank you so much for joining me on this journey of atonality and serialism. Uh, there's a lot to be explored. It's like going into an uncharted territory and you never know what kind of musical sounds you're going to create by digging into that matrix. And uh, I would just uh, recommend you to uh, try different things and don't be afraid of the major thirds, the minor thirds, and the major sixths. And, and do your best with them to combine the inversions, the retrograde, and the retrograde inversion along with those. So kind of interweave in those. The, the sky's the limit. This is a really fun territory and um, I enjoy it. It's a way to express myself musically and to go where no man has gone before uh, because it's always going to be different, you know. It's not going to be the same uh, tonal chords and uh, like tonality. So you're bound to discover different sounds so that's that's kind of why i like it so once again i thank you very much